Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the healing brush tools. Now, even with the best cameras, you may end up with slight imperfections in your images. Could be stray hairs, um, or even just natural things like unwelcome skin blemishes. Or you've scanned a photo in that's got some, some dust specks or, or whatever. But the point is, we still end up with some imperfections in our images that we want to be perfect. The healing brush tools are designed to essentially remove those imperfections. And this can be done by either completely removing them, covering them up with other parts of the same image, uh, duplicating pieces of the image. We'll see how this is all going to work out. So to start, we'll come over here to the, the healing brush tools. The first one on the list is the spot healing brush tool. The spot healing brush tool is really designed for removing things such as dust spots, stray hairs, uh, things like that. It's, it's probably the most useful one in here. It, it'll be just used more frequently than any of the other ones. So let's take a look at what that does. We'll quickly look here at the brush options. This is just like the standard brush options that we have for all the other brushes. We've got the size hardness spacing, the options you can get by right clicking. You've got the mode for how you want to do this with you know, replacing multiply screen, um, you know, things that you can check out there. And then these three options we'll talk about as we go, starting with content aware. Let's take a quick look at what this tool can do. So we're going to zoom in. We've got our disc golf basket here. And then we've got on the ground down here some bare areas of ground without grass. Now maybe we want to have grass in these areas. I'm going to scoot over here actually by the basket and I'm going to remove my logo so we can see this. Okay, starting with the content aware version, what this does is it basically looks at the area around where you brush and uses that to fill in the area you have painted over. So let's see how that works. I am holding down the left mouse button and I'm painting in over this dirt that I want to have filled. Once I let go, the dirt has gone away and it's replaced it with the textures that it found outside of my painted area. I can do it again over here. So just by doing that, I think you could see how useful this tool could be. You can quickly and easily change areas of your image. This can also be used just on a click by click basis. So if I wanted to get rid of, let's, let's go back up here. So we have our original image back. If I wanted to get rid of the dandelions, I can simply click on each dandelion. And it's going to grab all the grass and area around the dandelion and completely remove it. This works for things like skin blemishes or dust specks or anything like that. Now the difference between content aware and create texture and proximity match, let's talk about that. With content aware, as I just spoke about, it looks around the edges and fills in your, your painted area with the content that is in the surrounding area. With create texture, let's see how that looks differently. What that'll do is essentially it will look in the same area, but rather than simply filling it with those same types of pixels, it's going to create a texture out of those pixels. You can see this doesn't quite look like grass because it's just generated a texture on the fly and it's just filling the area with that texture. We could try that up here, maybe in the clouds. We'll paint over this cloud and see what that does. Okay, so it's taken the white and it's created a texture and just made that the area that it filled. All right, undo that, come back down. Undo that. Okay. The proximity match, on the other hand, now this one works a lot like the content aware, 
version. But what this one will do is it looks around the edges of your painted area. And instead of replacing the whole area, it will take the texture or the, the it'll take the pixels that it finds out here and blend them in. So instead of simply covering the dirt up with grass, it's putting some grass on top of the dirt and blending the dirt area with the grass area. So the big difference between content aware and proximity match. Content re aware replaces the area with the type of pixels it finds. Proximity match kind of blends them. Let's go back and just do this content aware one more time so we can really see. And now I filled that all in with grass. And that's really how the the spot tool is designed to work. Um, let's see one more quick example. So we've got a bird in the sky here. Maybe we don't want that bird in our image. Let's go ahead and paint over it. And the bird is now gone as if it was never there. Okay, I think that that pretty much does it for the spot healing tool. Let's move on to the healing brush tool, which is the second option here. The healing brush tool, it's kind of similar to the spot healing, but it's it works based on the, the area that you choose to sample. Um, I've already got a pre-sampled area here, but let me show you what that means. So rather than just simply painting over your area and having it figure out what to do on its own, the healing brush tool needs you to choose, okay, here... I'm going to hold down the Alt key to get the sample target and then click where I want to sample. Once I've done that, you can see I have this piece of grass and it will use that as my as the sample to continually paint over. Okay. So, let's do it again up here with the bird. I want the sky, alt click, choose some blue sky area, and paint over the bird. It has a similar brush style options. You can have the sampled area or you can have it generate a pattern. And then uh, similar options here as we've seen several times already. One option here we haven't seen yet is the aligned option. And what align does is when it's aligned, it will continue to paint, this much like the uh, the clone stamps tool, when you make a, a sample, you choose your sample area, it's going to continue to paint from wherever the sample area was relative to where you are painting now. So if you start, if I sample the middle of that cloud, and I start painting here, you can see the plus, the crosshairs, moving along with me. And then after I let go, since it's not aligned, it's going to keep going back to the starting point no matter where I click. If I choose aligned, it's going to stay relative to wherever, wherever I started at. Take another quick look at that. So we'll align it on the cloud. I'll go a little closer so you can see. So now I'm here and it's moving along with me. I let go, click again, and it stays there and it keeps moving along with me. Uncheck aligned. Click here, it goes back to the starting point. Click here, it's back at the starting point. So that's what aligned does. Then we have the, the current layer, current below and all layers. We have the tablet pressure and the diffusion level. The diffusion level controls how quickly the area you're painting on adapts to the surrounding image. Select a lower value for images that have things like grain or fine details, higher value for smooth images. Okay, next we have the patch tool. The patch tool is kind of used for repairing large areas. It can be used in a couple of different ways. Either you can draw around the area you want to replace and drag a sample on it on top of that, or you can sample an area and then drag that area over the part you want to replace. So let's zoom back into the bird. And 
And we've got the patch tool. We've got source checked. So this is going to basically use this area that I'm selecting. And as I move it, it's going to change that area to whatever new area I choose. So I could just choose you know, an area right next to it. And now you can see the bird is gone. Control D to deselect. No more bird. It's just basically copied this right here over to there and then kind of blended the edges. That's uh, kind of what it does that's better than just copying and pasting an area is if you were to just use the selection tool or the lasso, copy this and paste it, you would have a hard edge. Let's, uh, let's see how that would work real quick. So I want this area. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and I drag, oops, and I then drag it over here. Now you can see how there's a hard edge. So the patch tool copies that area and it will also blend the edges. Now let's choose, get back to the patch tool again and choose destination. And now we'll draw, now this would be the opposite. So we'll draw around the destination that we want and we'll move that over here on top of that. Control D to deselect. Similar effect. So it's just choosing whether you want to first select the area you're trying to fix and then drag over to an area that you want it to be or if you want to select the area you would like and drag that over the area you're trying to fix. That's, uh, that's the two options with that. We have a transparent option. If you check the transparent option, it'll tell Photoshop you want to use some transparency when you are blending the patch. And you can see how that looks right there. Uh, so it basically takes the patch, when it's blending it, it creates a little bit of transparency to help blend what you've selected with where it's replacing. Next there we have uh, a use pattern. That lights up as soon as you make your selection and it just allows you to use a pattern with your, uh, with your patch. And then, uh, the, the diffusion option. So control D, deselect. Uh, with the types of patch, you have the normal patch is what we've been doing and you also have a content aware patch. And what this means is with a normal patch, the patch tool adjusts the color and the tone of the cloned area to match the destination area, but it doesn't move pixels around inside of the patch. The content aware option adapts the cloned area by moving pixels around to kind of fit the destination area. This would be helpful in images with structures, buildings, lines, horizons, things like that. Uh, if you're not sure which one you would want to use, just try them both out and see how that works. And so that's that's about it for the patch tool. Let's zoom back out again here. Go to the next tool, which is the Content Aware Move tool. This is really neat. The Content Aware Move tool, it basically allows you to select part of your image, move it to another part of your image, and it will fill in the area left behind and blend the part you moved with the new area that you moved it to. That sounds really weird and confusing, so let's just do it and see what that looks like. So we're going to take this disc off basket. Maybe we don't want it right here. We want it over here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a selection around the basket. Okay, now you can see we have a selection. And then we click inside the selection, and we'll move it and stick it right, well, let's say we'll stick it right here. Once I hit enter, it calculates and then moves it. And you can see that it's now filled in the area that we left behind with content that was similar to what was around it. And let's move the select, control D to deselect here. And we can see that it's kind of blended the edges of what we chose around here. Now this wasn't a, a perfect move. Obviously I have some jagged edges here. But you can kind of see how that would be used. Let's do it with, let's go back and actually try it 
One more time. Let's move it slightly over. Back to the content aware. Okay, and that one's a little bit better. Kind of messed up the basket here, but hopefully you can see the power in this type of tool and, and you can play around with certain things that you're trying to move around and see if it's able to do it successfully or not. Uh, I have a feeling I could probably move this bird over here and that's going to be pretty decent. It's got some white from the clouds. Go in and blend those out. So that's what the Content Aware tool is designed to do, or the Content Aware Move tool is designed to do. Really, you can kind of see by the bird example there that what you're trying to move really has to kind of go to an area of similar texture. Like moving this basket over, there's still grass at the bottom, there's still trees in the middle, there's still sky around the top. We couldn't take the basket and stick it up in the sky because it's a totally different type of texture that's around it. And it's just not really going to know how to fill that space in. Same with the bird here. It's got white here and a darker blue here. So it really can only be used in some very specific types of situations, but it can do some, it can be a really cool thing to use. For the options up here, you have a couple of different things. Uh, I've kind of been skipping over the selection options because we've covered these a few times in previous lessons with the the intersections and adds and subtracts. So if, if you're still, if we're at this point and, and you have questions about what those are for, feel free to comment. Hopefully by now everybody has kind of got that and is okay with me skipping over certain little things like that. Uh, now for the options we have, we have a mode option which is to move or extend. Let's just see what extend does real quick. So now you can see that rather than actually moving it, we pretty much cloned it and made another basket right next to it, it essentially extending that over to another space. Then we have structure. And with structure, you can basically change the number here to, uh, it's got to be a value between 1 and 7, and it's just specifying how closely the tool should reflect existing image patterns. So if you put, if, if you were to go to 7 and you copy it over, it's going to very strongly adhere to the existing pattern. If you enter 1, it'll be very loosely. Do 1 at 1. Move it over, enter, okay, and then uh, you can you can see how much that's changed there. Now let's come back. Let's go to seven. Now let's move it over again, and that made the image a, a lot better there. So that's where that's what the the structure does. How much it keeps it intact. Then we have color. The color gives you a slider with a value between 0 and 10. And this controls how much you want Photoshop to how much you want Photoshop to apply color blending to the patch. If you enter 0, it's just disabled. If you go to 10, it's going to be maximum color blending. Uh, sample all layers, another one we've seen several times at this point. And transform on drop. What transform on drop does is it allows you to, once you move it, it allows you to be able to transform the image, meaning re resize or whatever you want to do with it. Let me get a better selection there. Move that over. And now that I've dropped it, I let go, I have some scaling ability. So we'll do that, enter. And now the basket is much smaller. If you uncheck transform on drop, it just doesn't give you the ability to transform it. And that's all the options for the content aware move. Next, we're going to have the last one, which is the red eye tool. Zoom this back out. And for red eye tool, I'm going to pull up a different image here. 
actually zoom in. This one uh, I think is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, most people know what red eye is in photographs and the fact that you don't want it there generally. So red eye is caused by light from the camera flash that's kind of reflecting off of your, your pupil, creating a red effect. Photoshop has this nifty tool that allows you to select your eye area and it simply, like magic, fixes the red eye. Zoom out. Now you can see that it's better. I can do it a couple times or tweak it a little bit and uh, get a better result. But I mean, essentially you can see I've selected that. I'll go back and do it again. Just put a box around the pupil. And bigger box. And it fixes that red eye. You have the option to select pupil size, like how big is the pupil for this image, and then the darken amount. And these are just, you can tweak these to get, you know, a better result based on your selection. If it's not working out right like that, obviously it doesn't look quite right. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time doing this. This is it's a pretty simple tool, uh, and you can see what it does. So if if you got a red eye image, come in here, do this, and most you know probably ninety percent of the time it's going to just fix the red eye for you, and you'll have a much better looking image of your person. And that that does it for the healing tools. Uh, I hope that you found this to be useful and interesting and fun, uh, and you can kind of see the power that we have with these healing tools and in fixing and modifying our images. Uh, as usual, feel free to, to reach out and let me know what you think. If I missed anything, if you want me to, if you feel like I should have went more in depth on anything, uh, or even just let me know some cool things that you've done with, uh, with your images. I would love to see some images that you've worked on and, and use these types of tools to to do some really cool stuff like before and after. Feel free to link images into, into the comment field to, to share with everybody. Alright, we'll see you in the next lesson.